here is an image based question where a pediatric patient's facial picture is given here showing numerous facial cleft evident at multiple sites. So based on the picture, the question that is asked here is classify the following facial cleft according to Tessier's classification. So as per the facial cleft classified by Paul Tessier in the year 1976, we have to categorize the various clefts seen in the picture given here and conclude which type of facial cleft as per the classification given by Tessier. So therefore, before getting into the options, or looking into the given image, we should first have a knowledge about the Tessier's classification. So, what are the facial cleft he has proposed in his classification? So, here in 1976, Paul Tessier gave a classification based upon the anatomical position of the cleft. So, the different types he has given are numbered from 0 to 14. So, these different types are further given or categorized into four different groups based upon the position, namely midline cleft, those involving the median structures, Paramedian cleft, those involving the structures present adjacent to the epithelium and orbital cleft are those involving the orbit and lateral clefts are those that are present more laterally and also running horizontally in the face. So, therefore, you have to remember that the Paul Tessier classified the facial cleft numbering it from 0 to 14 and then grouping it into four different groups namely midline, paramedian cleft, orbital cleft and lateral cleft and he has again described the cleft at two different level namely the soft tissue level and heart tissue level. So, he has categorized it so because he's, he has mentioned that the soft tissue cleft will have a slightly different location in comparison to the underlying bony cleft. So, therefore, he has given soft tissue and bony level cleft. So, first looking into the facial cleft of soft tissue, as we all know it is numbered from 0 to 14. So, let us make out those various facial cleft in the given picture. So, type 0 is going to be a median cleft which is involving the nose and the maxilla, involving the middle of the face in the midline. So, type 0 is there and then comes type 1 which is present adjacent to the midline, type 2 is which is still present lateral to the type 1 and then comes type 3 which is extending superiorly to involve the medial portion of the orbit and type 4 is extending lateral to type 3 and it extending from the upper lip to the lower border of the orbit and then comes type 5 which is extending up to the inferior border of the orbit lateral to type 3 and 4 and then comes type 6 which is extending from the inferior border of the orbit towards the cheek region and type 7 is a horizontal cleft which is running from the angle of the mouth and in some patients it will extend up to the tragus of the ear. So, it will resemble a complete facial cleft extending from the angle of the mouth up to the ear. And then comes type 8 which is extending from the lateral portion of the orbit towards the ear. And type 9 is present in the superior portion of the orbit involving the forehead on the lateral aspect and type 10 in the middle aspect that is in the, in the middle of the orbit, superior portion of the orbit and the forehead and type 11 on the medial aspect involving the superior portion of the orbit and the forehead and then comes type 12 here which is present or close to the midline and type 13 which is still medial to type 12 and adjacent to the midline. So, here we have to notice that the type 1 facial cleft when it extends superiorly it becomes type 13. So, therefore, type 13 is an extent of type 1 and type 2 when extended superiorly becomes type 12 which is therefore 12 is an extent of type 2 and type 3 when it is extended superiorly becomes type 11. So, therefore 11, 12, 13 are superior extent of type 3, 2 and type 1 Tessier's cleft. And then comes the last one that is type 14. So, this type 14 is a midline cleft which is involving the frontal and the nasal bones. Therefore, among the median cleft type 14 involves the frontal and nasal portion whereas type 0 involves the remaining portion of the nasal bone and the maxilla whereas type 30 is a new category added here. It is going to involve the cleft present in the mandibles. It is going to involve the lower lip and the mandible. So, therefore, the median cleft are categorized as type 14 on the superior aspect, type 0 in the middle and type 30 involving the mandible and the structures in the lower third of the face. So, based upon this different types of cleft, we are categorizing it into four different groups namely median cleft which includes 
subscribe 0, 14 and 30 and then you have paramedian cleft those that are present immediately adjacent to the midline and those include here type 1 and 2 and type 12 and 13 whereas next is the orbital cleft which includes type 3, 4, 5 on the inferior aspect, 9, 10, 11 on the superior aspect and then comes the lateral cleft which involves type 7, type 6 and type 8. That is 6, 7, 8 forms the lateral cleft. The same picture when seen involving the heart tissue that is involving the underlying bone is demonstrated here. Here again you can find number from 0 to 14 and the image clearly shows the structures or the bones involved in this cleft. And now getting into the content you can see or you can easily recognize or recollect that the paramedian clefts are going to be 1, 2, 12 and 13 just adjacent to the midline and orbital cleft are 3, 4, 5 on the inferior aspect. 9, 10, 11 on the superior aspect and the lateral cleft are horizontal cleft and they are 6, 7 and 8. Whereas the midline cleft or the median cleft is going to be 0, 14 and 30. So one another important point you have to know that the lateral cleft 6, 7 and 8. So all together are encountered in a condition known as treacher colon syndrome. That is nothing but mandibular facial dysostosis. Therefore, 6, 7, 8 is seen in preacher Collins syndrome. Whereas in case of hemifacial microsomia, you can see type 7 cleft. Whereas in case of golden heart syndrome, which is nothing but oculo auriculo vertebral dysplasia, which is again a syndrome associated with hemifacial microsomia. So this golden heart syndrome typically demonstrates type 8 tessius cleft is seen in golden heart syndromes. These are some other important MCQs we can expect from this tessius classification of facial cleft that is type 6, 7 and 8 are seen in preacher collins. Type 7 is more related to hemifacial microsomia and type 8 is more related to golden hover syndrome. So with this basic knowledge about the various types of facial cleft as given by Paul Tessier in his classification. Now let's get back to the clinical picture given in the question. So this pediatric patient is showing a cleft just adjacent to the midline and one more cleft even lateral to this and one another cleft is a prominent cleft that is extending from the right angle of the mouth. So here you can see that the patient is having three cleft. So the option one and three are demonstrating only two types of cleft. Therefore, we can omit first type 1 and 3 and then focus on option 2 and 4. So, now looking into the picture again, as I have said, it is present immediately adjacent to the midline. This will be type 1 cleft and whereas the another cleft when you extend it superiorly, it can extend up to the lower border of the orbit in the middle. So, therefore, this is most commonly categorized as type 4 cleft because if it is type 3 it should extend here okay it, it should be still more medial to this cleft and type 5 is still more lateral to this cleft therefore type 4 cleft is most appropriate here to this picture and then comes the one that is extending from the angle of the mouth and that is nothing but type 7 tessius cleft so therefore the pediatric patient here is showing type 1 type 4 and type 7 facial Cleft. Therefore, the option 2 which says type 1, 4 and 7 is the right answer that is the facial cleft type as per Tessier's classification seen in this pediatric patient. Whereas when it comes to option 4 you can see it says type 3, 4 and 30. Whereas type 30 is nothing but a midline cleft here which is going to involve the mandible. Whereas the patient in the clinical picture does not exhibit any cleft in the midline that is in the lower portion of the face involving the mandible. So therefore you can omit option 4. Option 4 is also wrong here. So therefore the patient demonstrated in the picture is showing type 1, 4 and 7 facial cleft as per Tessier's classification.